Hiya. If you've been using Unreal for any length of time, you'll probably get a giggle out of this. I know I'm late to the party, but I finally checked out the level sequence editor for the first time, so that's my new best friend. Obviously, I made a video a few months ago that talked about my use of timelines. Now, these are still a go-to for me, but I'm definitely feeling that I've hit the limits of what I can do with them. One room in the first dungeon in particular just got a little bit messy. It only had a couple of paths, but it had to track some state, and it used several different gameplay objects and NPCs, and I just wasn't really comfortable with the final thing. Now, the sequence editor is just a multi-track timeline, and I had some misconceptions about this because the feature's been evolving since I started using Unreal, but it turns out they're more powerful than I understood. You can expose variables from blueprints, key them and lerp them over time, you can manage material parameter collections, change material settings over time, you can have an event track so you can drop into a blueprint and call arbitrary code, which is the point where I'm going, right, this is cool. You've got animation tracks so you can play montages on actors, you can spawn actors in and out of the world, and most importantly, you can dynamically bind a track to an existing actor, so in my case, like the player character. Oh, and there's also a really simple audio sequencer. So my first attempt was just to make a level transition. Now this is a one-time thing, you're only ever going to see it the first time you enter a specific dungeon, which is why I wanted it to be long and have a bit of ceremony to it. As a simple kind of breakdown, the, the button is an existing gameplay object that spawns a sequence player and passes in the cinematic. Most of the UE docs talk about sequences being present in the map and started from the level blueprint, but you don't actually need to do this. Before I play my sequence, I have to bind my player character to it because my character is not present in the world until the engine spawns it, which means the sequencer can't have a permanent reference to it. But it's actually this binding stuff that I think is really cool because I could take any kind of actor and bind it to a track and then do whatever. So that's kind of where I'm thinking, right, how am I going to use this in the future? The sequence itself is actually really trivial. Um, the lines are done using gradients which are set up in the materials. Um, there's a bunch of parameters I've exposed so I can adjust the position and the, vis and the size of the visible bit of the gradient and then I can just lerp those over time to get the animation that I want. The player's lifted up and then an animation montage is played on the top of them. This is just a full body montage that does the actual rotation and wiggles the legs and arms about. And then to keep that in focus, I lerp the camera's position and its focal distance. It sort of goes out of focus a little bit in the middle where they're not quite matching. So I could probably, you know, manually step in there and key it up. But, uh, you know, as a, just as a first pass, it looks kind of cool. Um, the dissolution effect is actually just a tweaked version of the ones that Art High Tech are made available on the marketplace. So I'll include a link to that in the notes. The particles from that are rendered after depth of field so you can see them more clearly, which, you know, doesn't look kind of as good as I want, but, you know, you're fading out the effect at that point anyway. Up to now, when I've been doing audio for things like this, I've had to record a video of the finished sequence, bring that into Ableton, and then sequence the SFX over the top of it. Um, having the ability to just actually drag and drop effects into the sequence editor and line them up as you're iterating on the actual thing is... is actually a lot quicker it's really cool i quite like it the downside is you've obviously got a lack of effects i've not got any reverb or eq on these so what i'll probably do in the future is just get everything lined up in the sequencer stem it all master it in ableton and then bring that final thing back in as just like a one-off cue the rest of the game's progressing well the focus the last few weeks has been on the third uh, section of the overworld map I wasn't ever really happy with how that was laid out before, it felt too big, so I've really condensed it down now, reduced the number of paths that you can get through it, and the focus for the next few weeks is just to do all the custom geometry and locations that I need for that map. I'm posting a few more uh, short clips of stuff that I'm doing on the Many Shorts playlist on YouTube, so keep an eye out on that, and I'll be back with another devlog soon. Cheers.